Hi, in this third and last part, we'll have a look at how ONTAP manages physical and logical storage. First, there's physical storage, which actually concerns physical devices like hard disk drives and solid state drives, and the grouping of these devices into redundant configurations. To be somewhat more specific, this is how it works. Disks are grouped together in RAID groups. RAID groups have one or more parity drives, so that the data in the RAID group is protected for drive failures. These RAID groups are then placed in an aggregate. A cluster can have multiple aggregates to work with, but a single aggregate can only be accessed by the nodes of a single HA pair. So an aggregate is managed by a single node in the HA pair, and if needed the aggregate can fail over to the other node in the same HA pair. For example, if you bring down a node, the aggregate will automatically fail over to its partner. This is called storage failover. When you run out of space in an aggregate, the aggregate can be grown by adding drives to the aggregate. A very important remark, you may never shrink the aggregate, that is impossible. So be very careful when adding disks to an existing aggregate, because you'll never be able to remove them, unless you destroy the aggregate. Then there's logical storage, in which parts of the physical grouped environments can be carved out in the form of volumes which can be accessed by clients via multiple protocols. These volumes are officially called flexible volumes. So, as an example, you can create an aggregate of 5 terabytes and then create a 500 megabytes volume in that aggregate. The volume can then be made accessible to clients to store data. The volume can be grown and it can be shrunk, either manually or automatically. Multiple flexible volumes can share the same aggregate, and if needed, they can be moved to a different aggregate anywhere in the cluster. Now there are multiple examples thinkable, and we will further explore this in the module on logical storage. And finally, there's storage virtual machines and protocols. A storage virtual machine is a logical entity that lives in the cluster. It can either be running or stopped. This sounds kind of weird, but this is really what storage virtual machines are. They used to be called vServers or virtual servers, but now they're referred to as storage virtual machines. An SVM usually functions as a container for two important resources, volumes and lifts. The storage virtual machine will need one or more volumes to store data. Every SVM that you create will get a minimum of a one gigabyte volume which is the starting point of the storage virtual machine's namespace. These volumes in the storage virtual machine should be uniquely named, but you could have multiple SVMs that have volumes with the same name. All the volumes in one storage virtual machine are referred to as the SVM's namespace. The SVM will also usually have one or more IP addresses so that clients can access the storage virtual machine's storage. And thirdly, the SVM will need one or more configured protocols via which the data volumes can be made accessible for clients in different ways. We'll discuss protocols like NFS, SIFS, iSCSI and more. For now you should understand that ONTA basically supports two types of protocols, SAN and NAS. SAN obviously stands for Storage Area Network and NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. Now, by means of a NAS protocol, you can share a volume for file access. Clients can manage files in the shared volume. This is a very flexible way of storing data. Multiple clients can access the same data environment at the same time. This is typically referred to as file level access. So clients can copy, create and delete files. The second protocol would be SAN. The big difference with NAS is that with SAN, a logical unit or LUN is created in a volume and then mapped to a client. The client treats this LUN as if it were a local disk, so the client can partition the LUN and create a file system on it. This is referred to as block level access. Now in summary, we've seen that physical storage is managed by creating aggregates, and these aggregates are groups of disks. It was important to realize that aggregates can be grown, but they can never be shrunk. We've also seen that volumes are the logical implementations of disk space that can be offered to clients. Volumes always reside in an aggregate and can take space out of the aggregate space. 
And finally, we discussed SVMs, which have two major resources, volumes and IP addresses. And also, an SVM can run one or more storage protocols like NAS and SAN.